Welcome to the video walkthrough of Safe Console, DataLocker's central management platform. This five minute video will provide a high level overview of the key features and aspects of Safe Console, helping you see how DataLocker can help your company remain simply secure. As you watch, if there are features that you would like to discuss more in depth or other questions you have regarding how this solution fits within your organization, we would love to connect with you. Visit us at datalocker.com or send an email to sales at datalocker.com to set up a time to talk with someone from our team. Now, upon logging to Safe Console, we'll see the dashboard showing a high level overview of information within the Safe Console server, including a geolocation plot of where devices or endpoints have last checked in from, and more in depth device logs with user details, actions, and IP information. From here, we'll move on to the management of policies, users, and endpoints. Here you can see the user details screen where we can see the user specific information, assigned devices and audit logs. And then from there, we'll jump into the drive details where you can see device specific information, status and audit logs of recent actions of this device. You can also change the device status or reset a password from here. Next, we'll briefly see how to add new groups and users to specific policies by selecting the wrench next to the target policy. Now let's take a look at the default policy for a device connected to Safe Console. There are a number of sections in here that will be shown, but we won't discuss each in depth. The user defaults provides the option to prevent a user from resetting their own device, either for security reasons or to prevent accidental data loss. Anti-malware, if purchased, can be enabled and configured from this section. Device state allows the admin to require devices to check in periodically in order to be allowed to unlock, ensuring devices are always up to date with the latest policy applied. Skipping ahead to the password policy, granular control is available to ensure a user's password meets your organization's compliance requirements, either in length, complexity, unlock attempts, or even number of uses. Remote password reset is enabled by default, which empowers admins to assist their users in resetting their password without losing data on their devices. Now, write protection and file restrictions provide in-depth control of how and what kind of data users can store on their devices. Audits, which we'll see more of in a moment, is also enabled by default, capturing all activity done on a device or endpoint. Custom device information, often useful for proprietary asset tagging, provides additional flexibility, and Zone Builder significantly expands the control and flexibility of where users can access the data on their devices, also simplifying the unlock process for machines that are marked as trusted through the use of certificates, either generated by the device or imported by an admin. Now, jumping to Geofence and Trusted Network, these, when configured together, clarify the locations that are considered trusted by the device. Again, simplifying the control of where a user is allowed to access the data on their device. And this final section enables automatic updates, allowing admins to ensure that devices within their fleet are always on the latest or most recently approved version of the client software. After this, we'll head over to the audit logs and reports to display Safe Console records showing all the device activities and actions, that's user audit logs, or admin actions on the console under system messages. Next, we'll navigate over to the server settings, and please note that these settings are global and affect the whole console. And as such, some settings can only be modified by the account listed as the owner. First is SIM integration for ingesting logs, and then single sign-on for admin access, which supports SAML2 integrations. Now we'll navigate to the admins page where we can add or remove administrators for the console or control their access to the console. And you can also see additional information about each admin and where they are accessing the console from. From here, we'll look at the Quick Connect Guide. These are the steps required to configure an endpoint to be managed by Safe Console that can either be sent to your users or used by your administrators to deploy devices and endpoints. And lastly, we'll jump into the profile settings and take a look at our two-factor authentication options for administrative access. Safe Console supports using the Google Authenticator app or using SMS codes to confirm account ownership. This concludes our high-level overview of Safe Console, but we would love to connect with you to discuss any further questions you may have and see how we can help your organization maintain a secure environment for both devices and endpoints while keeping things as simple as possible.